What's up everybody? Welcome to Horror Reviews. Today we're going to be talking about a brand new 2024 horror comedy I can almost guarantee you've never heard of. Pulp Modern Die Laughing is an anthology horror comedy that's streaming on Amazon Prime right now for $4.99 or you can buy it and support the filmmaker for $17.99. Now this is a really unique film for me because the director or one of the directors of this anthology series, Scotch Rutherford, reached out to me via email and asked me if I would watch and review his film. So for me, this is a big moment because for my channel, I've never had anyone reach out to me and ask me to review their film. So it's a very exciting thing. So thank you, Scotch, for reaching out to me. I do appreciate it. I did tell him that when he sent me the screener to watch this film, I would do two things. One, tell my audience that he reached out to me and two, give an honest review. So I'm gonna do both of those things. But again, thank you for sending me that screener. I do really appreciate it. Big moment for my channel. As I said, Pulp Modern Die Laughing is a horror comedy anthology series similar to Creep Show. It's closer to Creep Show than it is like Trick or Treat. It's multiple stories that aren't really connected that are sort of tied together by an overarching story. And I guess this is based off of like a magazine by the same title, the creator of which is actually one of the actors in this film, if I understand correctly. And I'm not super familiar with like what pulp magazines are, how to look the term up. And I'm not super familiar with pulp modern, die laughing, the whole, the, what's this is, what this is based off of at all. But very interesting when you look into the term pulp magazines and things like that. Again, maybe people are familiar with that. I was not very familiar with that term at all, but this is based off of that. And I guess some of the stories in this film are based off of other works. Like one of them is based off a Stephen King story and some other different elements put into this. So let's get right into talking about Pulp Modern Die Laughing. There are five short stories that make up this anthology series. Six, if you count the overarching story. Let's talk about the first one, which is called Overkill, directed by Alex Montilla. And this is my favorite of the entire movie, the entire anthology. This one, so let's just talk about first the opening of the film. It opens with this like really uh, old school, like 80s hair metal style song. Great choice. Great song choice to kick off the film. Keeps up the energy, sort of lets you know you're in for this like maybe 80s throwback film of some kind. I wish I could remember the band because I specifically looked to see who it was. Probably like a local band or something. Maybe some, they seem like they're probably a smaller band that maybe one of the directors knows or something. I wish I could say the name. I will try to find them and put them in the description below. But I really like the song that kicks, kicks off this film. And then you get into, now again, going into this film, I didn't really know exactly what to expect. I knew it was low budget, but this right away, you can tell the budget shows. Um, it, some of the budget definitely holds this film back, but just in, going into it, ignoring that, just remember that this is a low budget film. It definitely shows in parts of that. So remembering that and going into this, I, you get into like this slasher story that seems like it's going to be just another generic slasher film and you're kind of like not knowing what to expect. It's a little slow in parts. And then you get some of this like social commentary, these like comedy bits that for me worked really well. They really hit. And then when you get into the concept of what this story is, it takes this slasher film idea and this final girl idea and it really like turns it on its head and does, I almost want to call like a skit because it's like a, it's definitely like a short film. It's a segment of this anthology series, but series, but it feels like a skit to me almost because it goes in such a wild direction that I think is absolutely hilarious. I went to work the next day after watching this and told my friend, I'm like, hey, this segment feels like something you and I would come up with and we would think was absolutely hilarious. It's the style of humor that's right up my alley. The the overall like joke of the film, and I'm trying not, I'm not going to give too many spoilers here. I'm not going to talk too much about the details about this short film segment but the overall like joke of the film is hilarious it's just right up my alley i think that uh it's original and this little segment is one of my favorite comedy horror pieces i've seen an anthology film in a long time i would say that if you're going to go check out this film and you're going to go rent it on amazon prime for 4.99 and support these filmmakers Honestly, it's probably worth it just for this opening sequence without getting into the rest of the films. I genuinely really enjoyed this first one. There's some good practical effects in here as well. There's it definitely could use some work with some sound design, some mixing. That's an error or a thing that's an issue throughout this whole film. Some of the music, while it is good in this, and some of it's kind of like retro throwback 80s synth type stuff. Some of it's just a little too loud, I mean a little too on the nose. There's moments where it, it should maybe be silent or should be a little more understated. 
And this film's not trying to be understated, but there are moments where the music really just like is kind of jarring and takes me out of it. I really like uh, the actress who plays the final girl in this. I like the actress, the actor who plays the killer. I think they're hilarious. I think the actress does it perfectly where she goes from like weak final girl to like this story twist towards the end. But again, definitely some low budget, some sound design issues, things like that. But if ignoring that, I think this is a really, really strong opening segment that I will remember for a long time. And as I mentioned, if you're going to go check this out, I think it's worth checking out just for this first segment alone. Let's talk about the second segment in this anthology film, and that's called Mirrored. And this was directed by Ryan Chauvey. And this one kicked things off with a very interesting start because it plays it so serious. But it's about this guy who gets this mirror installed in his bathroom, which is already just like kind of a wild concept that there's like a delivery service just for mirrors. So you kind of have to like hop on board the fact that this entire premise is a joke, but it plays it kind of serious at first. So it's almost a little confusing at first because you're just kind of like, wait, what? But then you kind of have to just realize, oh, the whole concept is like a joke in itself. And then something is wrong with the mirror. And I'm not going to give too many details, but there's this guy and he plays it so straight, calls up this like mirror delivery service and he he tells them there's something wrong with the mirror and they can't come to fix it or replace it for like a couple of days so you've got this idea that i think is really hilarious and it just progresses to get a little more over the top and ridiculous as it goes on i did not enjoy this second segment as much right away and then once i kind of like got into the idea and realized again that the whole idea is a joke but kind of played serious then I really enjoyed the second segment a lot more. There's some cool visual effects in here that I think are done really well. This one, it's this anthology series in particular, you can really tell each one is like written, directed, and shot by different people. So the sound is different, the visuals are different, the colors are different, everything looks a little different, sounds a little different, which is really interesting, but they still have like a similar style for the most part, but it's really clear when you get into the second segment, okay, there's like different people made this, which I know like a lot of films are like that, but this one just really stands out. So I do think that this one is very interesting. It's a fun little short film. These all feel a little more like short films you might see rather than like anthology movie pieces which I think are positives and negative because they because they work as shorts, whereas sometimes you get like an anthology film and like the idea is almost too grand. It's like a movie crammed into a short. And so this these are really just ideas that are short films and they're put into little like short segments. So I think that they work. I do overall, I'd say that this is probably my second segment in the anthology series. And you'll notice as I keep talking about them, it kind of starts like this and kind of goes down like that. But I think this is my second favorite in the film. Before I talk about the third one, I just want to mention that in the film sequence, the first two segments are like back to back. And then this right here before the third one is where we get a piece of the over like arcing story. So it's a little bit disjointed. It's a little like jarring at first when you're watching two segments and then you get this little short segment and then go into another short film. And it's like, wait, how come we didn't open with that? Or how come that wasn't in between the other one? So it's a little jarring at first when you realize that this is going to be like your overarching story. Then you go into the third film. But that being said, the third one is called Rest Stop. This one was directed by Cameron Schwartz, right? Cameron Schwartz. And this one is based off a Stephen King story, I guess. This one feels the most to me like a film. It feels the most cinematic and ambitious it's also the most serious in tone, and I believe it's the longest, if I'm not mistaken, or at least it feels the longest. Now, this one to me, I, it started on such a high note. I really was like, dang, I'm very impressed with this, this anthology series. Again, minus minor gripes, of course, budgetary things, like I said. But I was like, I was like, hey, I feel like I'm in for a, a pretty solid anthology series. And then I got to this one, and it's not that it's bad, but it just kind of really killed the pacing. And I think it's because partially... This is also trying to introduce this overarching story kind of shoved in there, which is a little bit feels disjointed and then also carries into this more serious and longer short film. So I think that combined together really killed the pacing of the film a little bit for me. And this one to me, I don't know. I just didn't quite get it. Now, that's probably my fault. I probably should watch it again and pay a little closer attention. I just didn't quite get it. Uh, I think that the acting maybe was holding back just a little bit. 
I think maybe some of the editing and some of the sound design just kind of was like, it was throwing me off a little bit. I couldn't quite get, and maybe the locations too, because it was like, it felt like time was passing and then they'd be, it'd be daytime and then it would be, time is supposed to be passed, but it looks like it's the same shot. And then time would pass, they'd be in a different location. Then they'd go back to the same location. So I don't know, there were elements of it that just kind of threw me off. Again, it's not that it was bad. I think that this one, as I said, is the most ambitious storytelling. I think it's clearly professionally shot, more professionally, feel, more professional feeling. It feels more cinematic to me uh, in its compositions and in its pacing and its storytelling. Its music is a little more understated. Uh, again, slower pace, but it just doesn't totally work for me. Now, again, that being said, I think it's probably my fault. I it's it's probably Stephen King's story that's a little bit bigger than what I really grasped on screen. I like the idea about this teacher who's writing a book and he's getting passed over for like this promotion, but I don't know. I think the some of the elements in the story parts just didn't really work for me. Like how he's getting passed over for this promotion as a teacher and he's writing a book, but people know that he's writing a book, but then like he's not really successful, but I it just, these pieces just didn't quite work to me. Also, again, some of the pacing I think was issues. Like there's a moment in this where your main character is supposed to be really having this like struggle with this identity or this split personality thing between the book and the author and like the character. And it's a little too long between when he, decides to like switch that character and do something in this bathroom stall. Also, I didn't really like the way that was shot. It just didn't quite work for me with like, it's kind of shot like in the corner of this bathroom stall. And it just, it didn't feel right to me. It kind of took me out of it. I think that there's just pieces of pacing and the way it was shot that just didn't quite come together for me. Again, not being that said, this is not bad. I've seen worst horror segments for sure. This one definitely is very light on the comedy, much heavier on the themes and horror. And it's not bad. It just didn't quite work for me. And unfortunately, like I said, it kind of took me out of the nice, fast, uh, I guess, high energy that I had started with. And this one kind of like drags you down. The fourth segment in this film is called Cocky. And this one is directed by Aaron McJames. This is about an evil cockatoo who is trying to pit a grandson and his grandma and a priest up against each other and sort of manipulate them into doing some bad things and just cause trouble and wreak havoc. This one to me, I think is a hilarious concept. This is another one where it's played almost so serious or so, I don't know, it's played in such a way that when some of the humor hits or some of the humor is said, it genuinely, this, this one made me laugh out loud because it feels so like, wait, what? <laughs> What'd you just say? And so some of the jokes like get me, but unfortunately this one I think is a really great idea and it just is not executed entirely well. I think if they had, first of all, if it had started a little better, the opening just doesn't work for me because we don't quite understand this cockatoo. Like, I think if they had maybe started it with like them going to a pet store and buying this cockatoo and then bringing it into the house and like the kid like making jokes that were not so like on the nose because the grandson's like talking to the cockatoo and trying to get him to say stuff. But he's saying stuff that's that's vulgar. So then when the cockatoo starts saying vulgar stuff, it just doesn't like work. I think it would have been better if the grandson was like, hey, say butt or something like that. And then the cockatoo like full on starts like doing what he's doing. I think the humor would have worked better for me than it did. And I think this one struggles with some editing issues. There's just some parts that just like feel very jarring and maybe could cut a little quicker keep the pace up. I definitely think also there's like some shots where it's lit a certain way and then you cut to another scene in another room and it feels like a totally different house and it's lit very different. And so these are just, these are budgetary nitpicks. And unfortunately I just have to mention them because they take me out of it. But again, that being said, I think the idea here is really funny. I think the voice of the cockatoo is great and the editing and the, the, the way that they shoot the cockatoo and the effects I think work really well. Um, again, the jokes here, I think are funny. The story is really funny. I think it works. I just think tighter editing, 
some a little bit better writing here and there, a little touching up the script and story, and a little bit just more attention to detail with the lighting and how it shot would have worked really, really well and really done it a lot of favors. It's just, it's hard for me to like to ignore those things. And so some of the comedy doesn't work as well as I feel like it could have, but I do like the idea here. I think it's funny. I don't know what it's based off of. So it's again, it's a solid little anthology segment. If I had seen this as a short film from somebody, I would say, hey, maybe like a little more time in the editing room, a little touch ups here and there, but the idea is funny, it's unique, it's original. And I think for the most part, it does work. The fifth and last segment of this film before getting into the, the overarching story is called Sloppy Seconds. This one is directed by Ryan Chauvey. Chauvey. And this one is a really cool story that definitely subverted my expectations. This is about a married couple who have some marital issues and there's a little bit of a uh, twist in here that I won't give away. I'm not going to go into too many details. This one to me is definitely shows the budget again, probably the most. It's just like the setting. It's a living room. It feels very short filmy to me. The way it's shot, I definitely feel, think just feels very like short film. I don't, I don't know how else to say that in like in like a negative way. It's not not really poorly shot by any means, but it just feels very much like I'm watching someone short film on YouTube that maybe is better done, but it definitely doesn't feel like a movie. It doesn't feel like it's part of like a whole, uh, an anthology series. This one just really like takes me out of the moment. Now, again, this one also is suffers from some very bad voiceover, some ADR that they had to do, and it just takes me out of it. And I hate to be nitpicking on these just like fundamentals of the films because I know that like this is low budget and it's like I should be looking past some of these things but unfortunately I just can't help but they take you out of it especially when the voices just don't match you can tell it's ADR and the acting isn't strong enough from the actor or the way it's shot isn't shot in a way that can kind of hide it uh, again maybe with some quick editing or some quicker cutting maybe could have worked better in its favor to hide that a little better um, or just cutting, even cutting part of the beginning of that or cutting pieces here and there, I think could have worked a little better. But that being said, the story I thought was going to be a really predictable story about a marital couple. It's called Sloppy Seconds. I think you could guess where you think it's going pretty quickly, but it doesn't go there exactly. And I appreciated that. It definitely caught me off guard. I thought I knew what was going to happen and I did not know what was going to happen. So I think the actress in here who plays the wife is really good. She's also in our last segment. I think she's a standout in this film. Uh, her and the final girl in the beginning, as well as the teacher in the teacher segment, just talking about acting real quick, as well as the guy who plays in the mirror segment also. All standouts to me for the most part. Um, I do think that she, this, this actress who plays the wife, though, is a real standout in the film. And I think she is great. Unfortunately, the husband she has to work off of has more screen time and he's a little more important and he's not as good. But again, as I said, I do like where the story goes. There are some good practical effects in here that I think work really well and a great use of a final like Hitchcockian shot to hide some of the budgetary constraints that I think works really well. Also, I do think that this is just probably the coolest little subverting expectation story in this anthology series. I wish, again, another little nitpick, I wish to the very end, without giving away spoilers, you get this little twist, and then you get a little additional piece at the end with the wife, and she's doing something else, and I wish she didn't do that. I wish she just did it to the husband, and that would have worked better for me. I wish she wasn't also partaking in this thing, which I'm trying not to give too much away. You can probably guess what it is, but I kind of, that just was like a little bit too much for me because I liked the idea enough already of this like scorned wife. And I didn't like that she also was like kind of losing her or I guess, uh, you know, went full ham at the end also. I don't know how else to say that. I'm trying not to give it away, but I didn't like that little extra piece at the end. But again, that being said, I like the story here. I do think if you can get past some of the uh, bad ADR and some of the budgetary constraints. This is a nice little 
horror short film. So let's get right into the sixth segment or the story, I guess, which is the overarching story that ties this whole anthology series together. And this is kind of like a loose tie-in. It's about this. It's called Vinyl Trap, first of all. And this one is the one that is directed by Scott Rutherford, who is the person who reached out to me and sent me the screener to watch this film. So this one is about a, a radio DJ who is getting mail and things delivered to him by this girl who he had kind of like a one night stand with and she's calling him, kind of harassing him. And he's this DJ who's getting like a books in the mail and he'll open up the book and then that'll be the story of the short film. That's kind of how it's tied together. And there's like little pieces and then he like eats cookies and then we get into like sloppy seconds, which is like the food one. So that's kind of how this all ties together. It's very like loosely tied together. This one is shot, or I should say this one's lit really well. Um, it's very like, it's a DJ booth. I like the neon colors, it's really cool. This is the one that stars the guy who apparently created or is the writer of Pulp Modern, Die Laughing, like the magazine. So he, it's a nice little touch to have him in this. I think that's a really cool little cameo. Unfortunately, that being said, I hate to say it, but he's just, he, is I think the weakest point of this segment. And this unfortunately is a really important piece because it's tying all the other films together. And if one short film doesn't work, you really need that segment. You need like a Crypt Keeper or whatever uh, to keep the energy up, you know, like John Carpenter in Body Bags. You need someone to kind of keep the energy up in between segments so the viewer can be like, oh, okay, I didn't love that one, or that one didn't totally work for me, but let's see what's next. You know, it's like, you need something to keep you going. And unfortunately, he's just not the best actor and his energy is so low. And it's just like, really the drags the pacing down. And it's just kind of like, every time you get into the segment, you're kind of like, where is this going? And they do this thing with the knife where he pulls out a knife and opens every package. I don't know if that was like a choice he made as an actor or if it was a director choice, but it just kind of feels really awkward. Like this knife is going to mean something later and then it doesn't. And it's like, I, I don't know, maybe I, part of it is like you get an Amazon package. I rip open the Amazon package and I didn't like the fact that it comes in an Amazon package and instead of like, it almost looks like he's going to rip it and they like grabs the knife and then cuts it and then opens it. And it's like, again, some editing would have worked better here instead of cutting into when he's pulling out the letter or out of the of the out of the book or pulling out the package you know cut when he's pulling it out and then cut in and i think it's just like a little better cutting some faster pacing could have worked really really well and done a lot of favors for this it just drags it down his energy is so low and he's playing classical music i just didn't quite get the connection between like his narration of what's going on and the short films that we're watching just didn't really work for me. He gets the mail and it's like the book and stuff, but, and that gets us into the story. But I, I wish that he had some sort of like, I don't know, something narratively, like again, like John Carpenter and body bags or something, somebody to be like, Hey, you know, that was an interesting song or that really took us down a different road. Let's get like something to keep us going, something to change directions. But unfortunately, it just doesn't seem to tie in at all. It doesn't really have anything to do with it. And it, it just doesn't work for me to hate to say that because this is the guy who emailed me and I'm sorry to say that it's not poorly directed. You know, it's not poorly shot, but it just, I would say the, the acting, the pace, and editing really hold it back just like some quicker editing like it's just like a honing in on that like again you know you've got a wide shot of him opening the package and it's like he almost is like eh, eh, and then he like cut in and it's like pulling it out and it's just we needed more shots we needed more to cut in between to keep that pacing up and it just didn't really work for me unfortunately um and i think I hate to say it, but this is one of the most important jobs of this film is it really ties everything together and it kind of holds it back a lot. So even the story elements, if they do work, this really holds it back. But that being said, enough criticism, talking bad things. I do like the story here. Um, I like the story of this guy who's getting harassed by this girl and he's like, don't you get it? It was one night. 
And she's kind of like, no, you don't get it. And she's sending him like these things that kind of remind him or to mess with him of what happened. Um, and then you get a little twist at the end, which ties the whole thing together a little bit more, which I won't get into. I liked, I did like that little, that little twist, that little take. But again, it just doesn't totally work for me because it's kind of like there's a person bringing him mail. So there's maybe someone else in the studio. And then... And then it's kind of like feels like there's not anybody else in the studio because something happens. So I like the freeze frame at the end also with the, he's like looking at um, the character and what happens. And it's just kind of like credits roll. I like that. I like the story. All that being said, if you stayed to the end, I really appreciate you watching. This is a very fun little anthology film. I definitely have lots of issues with it. Again, these are budgetary constraints. These are things that you can tell like. These filmmakers are, you know, they're not working with a ton of money. I don't know what the budget is for this film. And that's going to show, unfortunately. But again, that being said, I think there's some cool stories in here. Some cool ideas. It's $4.99 on Amazon Prime right now. Go check it out and support these filmmakers. You know, honestly, pay the five bucks if you like to support horror, you know, and see what they can do next. Because I do think that these writers, these directors could do some great stuff with some bigger budgets. And, you know, as I mentioned... My favorite personally is actually the opening and pay the five bucks for like a short film and watch that opening. I think the idea is hilarious. It's very unique. Again, give it a couple minutes because you start off with something a little generic and it feels a little rough at first. You're, you're really noticing that budget, but I think the opening concept overkill, the opening film is hilarious. So it's worth watching. Go support these filmmakers. You know, I know I tell us negative things about it. But I do appreciate you sending me the screener, Scotch. So I really appreciate that. Thanks for reaching out to me. If you have more films or anything else, hey, send them my way. Thank you again for letting me watch and review your film. And thank you all for staying tuned to the end. I'm going to link down below where you can check out this film and rent it for $4.99. I'm not going to get any money from that link. I'm also going to link down below the magazine. So go support them. Check that out as well as some notes and stuff from the director there. And thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. I don't want scared. I'm a big, bad wolf. I never see the silver line and only see the gold. I don't speak in caps, though. Everything bold. And I put that on myself because it's a life that I done chose. I said, come through. You can see me on the west side. Now it's funny how they walking with it.